A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. We come back to another video. We are going to do engineering clock, only available for one and a half months, 200 pieces only, link down there at the top of the description. Check it out, it's amazing, limited thing. We are going to check out this thing today, the sum of factorials. Many of you probably have never thought about something like this because it really doesn't look like it would allow for some kind of closed form or a nice expression at the end. But there actually is. And what we are going to derive today is instantly an, an, an analytic continuation of this thing for the whole complex plane on the right. Real part of n in this case being greater than zero. Other than that, there's also another expression for this thing. That this function has a certain name. We are going to talk about this at the end that involves um, exponential integrals, complex numbers, half gamma functions, so yeah, all this crazy stuff, so, so upper incomplete gamma functions, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty amazing. I'm not going to derive it on this channel though because it would take like five to 10 videos to derive this expression. Not, not worth it to be honest. I would lose it, a lot of viewers, but we are going to dive right in. It's going to be kind of amazing what we are going to do today. So K factorial. We are going to extend this to an analytic continuation and there's actually something that we are really familiar with at this point. K factorial is nothing but the gamma function of k plus one. Okay, we are going to rewrite it. So this right here is just a finitely boy bounded between zero and n of the gamma function of k plus one. And the gamma function of k plus one actually allows for a nice analytic continuation to the right hand complex plane. That's, that's a good thing here being given by an integral representation. I have derived this thing before using Feynman integration, basically Leibniz rule for integration and also Laplace transforms. Check it out, link will be at the top of the description. Pretty amazing video. So this thing right here is on the one hand, the sum being bounded between n and zero of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t, this is the variable we are integrating over, times t to the k power integrated with respect to t. And here, yeah, now we are halfway done already. If you see something like this, it's going to be quite, quite nice. Now at this point, we are just having a finite sum here, meaning we can, without any further explanations, use the linearity of the integral to just interchange integral and final summation here. We are going to do this. Also, e to the negative t is, is independent of the running index k, so let us bring it between the integral sign and our summation, leaving us with an integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t finite t boy where k is bounded between zero and n of t to the kth power integrated with respect to t. And here's an absolute blessing of God. This is, a, this is a really good thing. This thing right here is just a geometric progression. I have derived it before, take the limit as n approaches infinity. We are going to talk about this in a second and you would have the geometric series. Not going to do this, this is just a simple geometric progression leaving us with integral from zero. Oh, that's a sexy integral sign. Oh, I'm so good at drawing these. That's the only thing I'm, I'm really good at, to be honest. e to the negative t. And the geometric progression gives us, so our upper bound for the summation is n. So t to the n plus one of power minus one over t minus one integrated with respect to t. And that's it already. This is an analytic continuation to the real part of n being greater than zero. And it's pretty amazing, right? I mean, it looks fan fantastic. That's a really nice integral. And if you plug in integer values for n, positive integer values, then, well, that works out quite nicely because then our geometric progression is just going to reduce to what we have here. You can do um, integration by parts over and over again. n times it should be, or n minus one times. No, it should be n times, I, I think. Yes, n times. And then you are going to end up with uh, just the summation up here, basically. It's, it's, it's a pretty nice thing. And we are now going to take a look at the graph of this integrand because it's, it's kind of interesting to look at what you are going to get out of here, even for, for half values of n, for, for example. If you want to find the summation from one half to, to zero of k factorial, that's, that's also a thing. And yeah, here's the graph. All right. 
putting off a little sex star here, we're going to take a look at the graph of the thing. So the gamma function or this representation is only defined for the real part of n being greater than zero. So I have put the integrand here and if we go into negative um, territory then this whole thing is going to diverge. Um, it, it won't work out so this integral won't um, e exist for negative values. But if we take a look at positive values you might notice that our graph is going to grow in some way. Okay, um, If everything is between 0 and 2 then the graph is still pretty uh, nice to deal with. So the, the curve looks nice and sleek but once we start going higher for example 3. Well there we go. Curve is growing. What about 4? Ah oh, goodness. What about 5? Oh damn. <laughs> Look at that. Now at, at 5 it already starts exploding but this comes in quite natural because you see our integral is just uh, the area under this curve. Meaning overall that our 5 factorial as the upper bound is going to be 5 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 3 factorial plus 2 blah blah blah. And 5 factorial is already a lot of stuff. Um, it's already, let me think for a second, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 is going to give us 24, ah 120 already and if you add this stuff up it's, it's just going to grow so damn hard. So let's, let's take a look at say, oh goodness 6. It's exploding so hard. Now let us zoom out really hard and now for number 7. I can't even fit it on the screen already. You see um, the, the area under this curve is just going to explode and here's a nice and basic intuitive understanding about this. It's just going to diverge for really big values of n. This integral for n approaching infinity is just going to diverge which does make perfect sense because well we are adding up positive stuff which just gets so much bigger over time. Factorius grows so extremely hard. Um, other than that one cool thing I would like to take a look at is if we zoom in yet again. If we take a look at yeah this is a really nice curve just stopping at the number one there. But um, if we just take a look at 0 0.4, this is quite an interesting thing. 0 0.4 looks like it's not continuously differentiable here. So it's, it's not differentiable in 1, which is kind of curious. Then if we go up to 0 0.8, we have the same situation. In 0 0.4 steps up until 2.0, it's going to look quite weird. 1.2. You see now it's it's getting kind of smooth here. I'm not certain if it's differentiable there for like values between 0 and 1 where it's a multiple of 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. I'm not certain about the, the differentiability there. This is just a nice little observation um, I have noticed. Yeah other than that really cool stuff here. If we put uh, one half here for example then the area under this curve is going to represent like the sum of factorials up until one half factorial whatever this is supposed to mean all right. I hope this little insight was to your liking. Back to the blackboard. And now here's a little bit more background information and the function the e equation for this thing actually is a really cool thing. That's a function with respect to n okay it's it's, um, it's dependent on the variable n and this thing is actually called Kurepa's sum or Kurepa's function k of n and it's a well-known thing. Um, I have derived it for myself though so, so I derived this integral representation for myself. It's, it's not really hard you see it's, it's like a two-liner it's not too much work but it's still kind of interesting that um, someone has uh, dealt with this before and Kurepa has found in another expression for this thing involving exponential integrals. It's, it's an absolute monster so de deriving this is really not easy, it's, it's really not trivial. Other than that um, there's a cool functional equation for this thing. Um, you might notice that if we take the difference of Kurepa of n and Kurepa of n minus 1, what is it going to evaluate to? So Kurepa of n is nothing but n factorial plus n minus 1 factorial plus blah 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 up until 0 factorial and Kurepa of n minus 1 is n minus 1 factorial plus n minus 2 factorial up until 0 factorial. And all the parts starting from n minus 1 factorial are going to cancel out in the summation leaving us just with n factorial at the end. And n factorial, okay I'm going to write this out, this is n factorial, is nothing but well gamma of n plus 1. So the really cool thing about this is that there's a really nice functional equation here which looks kind of like the functional equation for the digamma functions 
for example, or the trigamma functions or polygamma functions. It's pretty interesting if you ask me. So that's a really nice connection between the gamma function and Curly bus function. If you have any further questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And other than that, I would like to thank Brian for sponsoring this episode of some more analytic number theory here. I hope you enjoyed this analytic number theory goodie featuring a rarely occurring special function. I really enjoy working through such intimidating looking problems that turn out to yield such slick solutions. If you also find joy in playing around with integrals, summations and like to simply try out new and exciting mathematical tricks, then Brilliant could be the perfect fit for you. Brilliant is an online learning platform and app which focuses on active learning and problem solving. Brilliant can help you achieve your STEM goals by working through the over 60 interactive courses in maths, computer sciences and all sorts of scientific disciplines. A huge variety of mathematics-oriented content to play around with can be found in their amazing Road to Calculus and Advanced Mathematics courses. Other than that, they have just recently added their brand new cryptocurrency course that I would love to cover with you, my subscribers, on an upcoming live stream two weeks from now. So if you really want to get a first glance of their brilliant website, make sure to check out one of those live streams once they go live. They are always such a lot of fun. So if this feels like a something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can get completely free access to Brian and the first 100 people to actually completely use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a really good deal considering how much content they have on their website up until this point. So try it out and support the channel this way. And I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, recommend channel like. Also, engineering, Warlock, only available for one and a half months. 200 pieces limited. So get yourself one link at the top of the description. And until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. <sighs> Ciao. Love you guys. Appreciate ya. Yeah, <laughs> I need lots more.